So good morning and welcome back to Twin Stick Garage. So if you're new here, uh, my name is Mark. I love building old trucks. I love everything about trucks and trucking. And I have a bit of an obsession. And my, my current project that I'm most focused on is trying to make a replica truck and trailer from the Smoking the Bandit movie with Burt Reynolds and Jackie Gleason. And how they all took to the road one day for a quiet little drive in the country. From Georgia to Texas and back in 28 hours flat with a truckload of bootleg beer. And the truck's getting pretty darn close, but the trailer, oh, nice bright sunrise. The trailer still needs some work. So previous episodes, I've been working on the, the movie correct, or at least movie corrector uh, tandem set. So that still needs to go underneath the trailer. And then since it's a van trailer, it needs the reefer unit on the uh, mounted on the front. So in the last episode, I gave her all I had last Saturday, but I just, I didn't, I kind of ran out of time and ran out of steam and didn't quite get it far enough to actually prime and paint it. So that's the goal today is to get that finished. Get you prime, painted, and weighed, you're going to be perfect. You can see I got my, my temporary painting booth here. Again, for those that are new, here's some of the other projects that I'm working on. This was what the, uh, started the whole channel here. This is what I found. This is my 359 Peterbilt that I'm hoping to get painted up and back on the road by summer. Again, I'm starting to run out of time because summer is quickly approaching. And then this, don't worry about those. This project here is a K100 cab over that I'm doing up in the spirit of the one used in the 70s trucking movie called Highballing with Jerry Reed. Of course, Jerry Reed was the truck driver and smoking the bandit as well, so I'm kind of got both his trucks. So this is a uh, ridiculously long wheelbase, obviously not matching the movie truck. Well, oh boy, I'd like to know the yo-yo to talk this out. And we're gonna do some some fun things with that truck. Got new exhaust, and boy, lots of work doing over there too. So, but today, like I was saying, the goal is gonna be is to get this thing ready to mount on the trailer. And move one step closer to having a complete smoking the bandit setup ready for the road. So I was thinking about it last night. I was going, how am I going to paint this thing with, uh, without smudging the paint, without having to move it? I mean, I could have suspended it from the, the Gratz gantry, but then I didn't want to get overspray on that beautiful red powder coat. So I thought, I can't hang it from that. I had it sitting down on the ground, and I thought, well, that would work, I guess. But then how am I going to paint kind of the underside? I mean, this, this side is obviously uh, against the trailer but I wanted to make sure that I really painted the, the corners and the edges so no old paint or, or bare metal shone through. So came up with the idea of putting it on jack stands and with the added benefit of now it's kind of at a working height or a working bench height, so that'll be, that'll be good for my back. So I'm happy with that idea. So what the plan is out of the gate here if you're familiar with body work, you know that it takes a lot of time and you never want to rush it. If you try and rush and say, ah, oh, it's good enough, let's just paint it, you'll always be disappointed. So you want to take the time. Uh, someone commented a while back when I was painting snowman, they said uh, their dad taught them that if you think it's done, sand it just a little bit more. So the idea is, is you want to really put as much effort in as possible. And I do with the doors as, as well because the doors are going to be right on the front of the, obviously of the reefer unit. And the reefer unit's gonna be mounted on the trailer directly behind the truck. So you're gonna see it straight away. So I wanna make sure I take some time and get those as good as I can get them. And then the plan will be I'll hang those from the ladder so I can paint them. Um, have to wipe everything down. I'll probably, probably sweep the floor out and then maybe I'll get the car washer and wet the floor. Put some plastic down so I don't end up painting the floor. 
Although the, uh, the gray high build primer would probably be an improvement over how stained my floor is getting, but I don't necessarily want to paint it the, the Hyundai Night Shadow Brown. So that's actually, it, like the truck looks black right now, but if you get it in the direct sunlight, it's actually got a brown tint to it. So from what I can gather from watching the movie, I don't believe the truck, the trucks, two, two trucks, I don't believe they were actually black. I think they were, a lot of people call it a coffee brown. Of course, I couldn't find coffee brown. So Hyundai Night Shadow is what we're going to do. So since I painted the truck that color, I'm going to do the same thing with the trailer. So with that, I guess I will stop jabbering on here and I will get going on finishing these doors. So this is, uh, I built this up with fiberglass last week and now it's nice and hardened up. So now I'm trying to knock it down because there's a bit of a ridge there. So I'm going to try and knock it down with the Milwaukee Angle uh, grinder here. I've just got a little disc on there that, that'll hopefully eat into that pretty good. And then I continue to sand it down. I guess that's one good thing with the wind is it blows all my dust away so the guide coat that i put on there it's just this uh product i bought off amazon but what it does is it shows you because you can you can sand this and when it's all dusty and uh the bond was just getting all sanded and you feel it and you're like oh yeah it's perfect but the guide coat will tell you the low spots and the spots where you got some pinholes so as you can see there that needs a little bit of glaze a couple low spots there that i probably uh, when I had the, what do you call that, the spatula, there must have been some stuff on there. So when I smeared it in there, it made a few grooves. And then there's another low spot. So I'll quickly put a little bit of, of glazing or icing, finishing putty in there in those low spots that are still dark. And then we'll let that harden and sand it again and wash, rinse, repeat. And we'll get these doors just tipped off. So of course the refrigeration unit is uh, meant to keep, you know, veggies and, and cold beer cold. So that's why they had reefer shells on the trailers in the movie, but the trailers in the movie were, were fake reefers, kind of like this one's gonna be, because they have the fuel tank down below, so you can tell that they were, they just took some Thermal King reefer units and bolted them on there. All right, so we'll let that harden in the sun here. And while that's drying, do have some more sanding to do over on the reefer unit so i don't need to get it perfect on the inside because of course the doors will always stay closed and i'll probably pin them closed because there's no real reason to open this up but i did want to paint in here so i'll try and clean this up as best i can so at least the the primer sticks to it i mean there's there's still dirt there i don't really want to paint over dirt <laughs> Now that it's on jack stands, I kind of get a better look at it at the bottom. Look at it. I mean, just get a look at that. And uh, yeah. what I realized, thinking about it, was when this is mounted up on the trailer, when you come walking up to the trailer, you're going to almost be looking up at this. So there's some gouges and some dents in there. So what I thought is, because you're going to see this, I might as well put a little bit of filler in here too and, and make it look pretty. Why not, right? That should do. Yeah, so as I was saying, the, uh, on the seed, they needed the reefer unit to make the, the movie believable that they could actually take the beer from Texarkana to Atlanta and keep it cold so it didn't go bad because the beer wasn't pasteurized back then. So that was kind of why they made that law because they were worried they would make people sick if they if they let the truckers haul that beer there 
it might go bad even if the, the reaper was still working or maybe it wasn't able to keep up to the hot you know Georgia temperatures in the south there so that's why they had reefers but anyway the in the movie so Hal Needham was the director and he was Burt Reynolds stuntman and uh, there's that movie uh, uh, once upon a time in in Hollywood done by oh I just spilled it all uh, done well a few years ago I guess by Tarantino and if you didn't know that movie was actually based on Brad Pitt and DiCaprio were actually it was based on Hal Needham and Burt Reynolds so they were roommates and so Hal Needham when they were filming which movie was it was it Gator I can't remember which movie it was. I got, I got to go back. I'm getting, having a senior moment here. But the, they were filming a movie and they had Coors beer in their fridge and it kept getting stolen. And so they finally figured out it was the, the cleaning lady at the hotel was stealing their beer. And they said, well, why are you stealing our Coors beer? And she goes, oh, this stuff's worth a fortune in this, in this part of the country because you can't get it. Because again, they weren't allowed to bring non-pasteurized beer all the way to the south. So that's where Hal Needham got the idea for the, the movie and he, he wrote the script. And then he took it, he took it to a bunch of different uh, movie producing, I mean movie studios. And they all basically said, no, 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 you know, Paramount, MGM, they all passed on. They thought, oh, this is a ridiculous concept. Paul and Beer, no one's gonna watch that movie. Ended up being the second largest movie of 77 behind Star Wars. And uh, so anyway, he went and he went, finally went to Universal and he was pitching it away and he said, you know, I need a budget of three million and they were kind of hemming and hawing and, they, and so then Hal Needham goes, you know what, I've got, a, I've got an idea for the lead for Bandit, Burt Reynolds. And so the executives went, you know what, if you can get Burt Reynolds, we're in. So, uh, so Hal went home to where he was living and he asked his roommate Burt, he said, Burt old buddy old pal. You want to be in this movie that I wrote? And so Bert read the script and he, he admitted one time, he said it was the worst script he ever read. But he said, okay, Hal, since you're my friend, I'll do it. But I want a million dollars. And I think they only had, th Hal only had three million approved by Universal. So Bert took a third of the budget just for his paycheck. So, so they still had to pay Jackie Gleason and, and get all the cars and the trucks and, and do all the filming. But they were able to pull it off and uh, I think it, uh, they did a heck of a job. It's an awfully good movie. Now, of course, they didn't go all the way to Texas. They basically just drove around Atlanta in circles. A lot of it was filmed in uh, Jonesboro, which is just south. That was actually the Texarkana city that they just rebranded. I actually went there uh, in an earlier episode. If you go check out the the videos in my feed there you can see where I went and saw some of the original places the bridge where they they did the big car jump that's still there well the bridge isn't there just a couple posts but yeah it was neat to see and I went and saw Lamar's where the snowman rode over all the motorcycles that was pretty cool I mean there's not much left that was a that was a long time ago my goodness we're coming up on on 50 years with that movie in a few years so it's uh, definitely the younger kids today, a lot of them don't really know about that movie. They should. and I'll say it again. Body work takes forever. Man, it's a time suck. I've been working on this for hours. 
but looking pretty decent, feeling pretty smooth. I think that's as, uh, as good as old Twin 6 is going to get it. Not too bad for this outfit. I mean, it's not perfect. But like I always say, it's not bad. It'll work. Okay. I think I am just about ready to start cleaning up. I'll hang the doors and blow out the shop and then, yeah, we'll wipe everything down and mix up some primer. Sweet. So here's some of the cool stuff that I want to try and maintain. So the original Thermal King badge, so I'm going to tape that off. And I'll tape off the uh, fuel gauge. Of course you put diesel in this thing to run the little engine to <clears throat> either run heating or cooling. And then these little, these little uh, indicators, heat, defrost, cool. And these gauges, I think I can just take these gauges right out of here. <coughs> And actually I had a fan send me a replacement gauge for that one. So it's gonna be pretty cool to put those on there if I can get the right, oh, it's three eighths. All right. We'll save it cause it's cool. So that's the Thermo King oil pressure gauge. Obviously the oil pressure for the little diesel uh, APU unit. So I'll take that other one out and mass this off and then we start wiping everything down. All right, so next step, I like to use a wax and grease remover. It's basically just gonna wipe down all of the prepped areas and get it as clean as you can. I'm gonna use this again on, on the primer and wipe that down before I put the final, uh, not base clear, I'm gonna do single stage. But yeah, so I just got a little spray bottle from Princess Auto. <clears throat> we'll just fill this up. Simply spray this stuff on there, so I can get it going. Hello, it's black, there we go. And basically just gonna wipe it down. So it's gonna take off, like I say, any grease, or oil, or anything that, that the paint's not gonna like. So I'll just wipe down all the areas to get painted. And try and keep the tape on there. Probably should get that vent pen going. This stuff's a little strong smelling. Oh, finally getting to my favorite part, actually painting. After all that prep work, two Saturdays to try and get it ready. Now the fun part finally comes. So let's see what we got here. So I went and picked up a bunch of gear from C-Max. They've been a pretty good supplier for me. I go with nascent paint because I've had good luck with it. There's the Hyundai Night Shadow Brown. So that's the color that I used on the, on the truck. Again, looks black. And then if you get in the sunlight, it looks brown. So it's, it's a perfect, perfect match. And then I got the, uh, the 2K high build primer. So I really like the high build primer because as the name implies, it actually builds up and fills in. A, you know, it doesn't, if you don't do a good sanding job, it's still gonna show up and look like garbage. But if there's a few spots you didn't quite get to, or it's, you know, maybe not visible to the naked eye, it'll kind of fill that in a little bit. So it's a thicker primer. And uh, that's why you need a bigger gun. So I went with a 2.3 mil uh, spray gun for the primer. And then I'm gonna go 1.4 for the single stage. So I'll probably have to come back and paint that tomorrow because we're gonna have to let the primer obviously harden overnight. 
I always forget. What do the instructions say on the primer? Select prime. Four parts primer, one part activator. That's reducer. All right, so it's four, four to one on that. So set up the new gun. Now I just pick up these, these disposable guns from Princess Auto. Especially when they go on sale, I try and pick up a bunch of them. So I like to go all the way wide open. So you pull the trigger all the way in and you turn the screw till it makes contact. And that's, that's fully wide open. So then from there, release it and I go in just a touch from wide open. And then the fan, I like to go all the way open and then go in maybe just a quarter turn just to tighten the fan up a little, to tighten the, uh, tighten the pattern up a touch. Okay, so what did I say, four to one? Okay. Do the one to one, I'll fill it up to four, and then I'll just put the, to number five with the activator. and give it a good stir and we're ready to go. Yeah, still lots it needs doing, but every bit of progress is progress. Once the reefer's done, then I guess we gotta drill the holes and then I've gotta start, we're gonna swap the tandems and then I gotta start actually painting the trailer. I gotta find a nice hot summer day that's not windy because I'll have to paint that outside. Okay. Let's go spraying. There she be. Two good coats of primer. Oh, it's looking pretty sharp if you ask me. Yeah. Not too shabby, Mark. Not too shabby. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to go in and watch some hockey and let this dry and cure. And then through the magic of editing, I'll be right back to paint this. All right, I'm back at it again. So the primer's all dried. I still need to sand it. I'll probably sand it with 320, just kind of scuff it and get it as smooth as I can and then wipe it all down. But I was also thinking, I want to make sure that this is ready to mount. Uh, this is of course the Chrome Thermal King uh, grill or radiator guard that I think is going to be such a nice piece on this fake reefer. Um, but what I wanted to do was I figured I'd mount it because the brackets, when I took the brackets off, the bolts broke because they were so rusted. So now what I'm doing is I'm kind of repositioning it a little bit and I just want to mark out where these brackets are going to go and then I'll just drill and tap the holes. That way I don't have to play around with this when it's really nice paint. I'd rather do it when it's primer.
It's always something. So as I was putting these guys on on this side, I noticed that there was no nuts. For whatever reason, they broke off, so I had to weld on some nuts because those will have to be there, of course. So when I set this on there, just put the bolt in because you're not going to be able to get behind it. Yeah, just shim it with some washers. Okay, how's that look? Yeah, I'm digging that. Okay, wasn't this supposed to be a painting episode? Okay, so when you're painting your garage or your shop, you've obviously got a lot of headwinds. You don't have a perfectly ventilated paint booth that's got positive pressure, moving the paint and the fumes out and keeping the dust down. So one of the tricks that I like to do is I like to use a car washer and just soak the floor. That helps to keep the dust from blowing up into your paint. Again, you're never gonna get a perfect paint job painting in a, in a garage or outside. But this is, uh, like I said, you do the best you can with what you got. So, again, we're gonna go with another gun. I know there's people out there that are just yelling at the screen going, just wash your gun. But again, for the extra 40 bucks, it's it's uh it's worth it to me to just have to have something new and clean because again, I'm not a professional painter, a lot of headwinds here. So I'm trying to make it as good as I can get it. Now when I painted Snowman, I actually bought a really good gun. Okay, there's wide open. We'll go in a little, and I'll do the same when I when I do snowman, or little by little. So all the way open, and then we'll close it up. So again, like I say, put uh, give yourself the best chance of success. And if you think about it, so I spent a little, a few bucks on guns. I mean, a friend of mine, he actually had his. He said he went to, took his Kenworth to the dealer and said, "How much to paint it?" I said, "Oh, absolutely! Come on in here." And they uh, they quoted it at thirty thousand dollars. So thirty grand versus the two or three I spent doing snowman. I think I could spend forty bucks on a gun. Here's one. Four. Four. Five. Six. I'll just do I'll just do the side here. They got uh, ten equal parts. So I'll just do that. Because I'm not smart enough to figure out how to use the, the fancy deals on the side there. Okay, so we'll just go for the first one to four. Sing it, Loretta. Someone was saying you can use producer to clean your gun. I suppose I could try that, but again, a $40 gun, the reducer probably costs that much. You know, two parts reducer, so we'll go up to the six. Okay. And then one part activator. There. Just use straight up numbers on the side instead of those fancy columns that I don't know how they work. Oh, that is lovely. Look at that. It's got a little bit of pearl metallic in there. I don't know if you can see it. 
but it's it's a it's a lovely lovely color. Oh, look at that! It's perfect in there. Made the perfect amount. This is so much fun. Okay, there's coat one. It says let it flash 10 to 15 minutes. And I wanna make sure I give it the right amount of time because I'm wondering if that was part of my problem. <laughs> you can see the wrinkles of the, of the tarp in behind. That's not bad at all. Black's not very forgiving, but when you get it right, it's pretty sweet. Oh, my feet are sticking to the floor. That's why I put the tarp down, so I don't end up covering my floor with this paint. So what I was saying was when I did, when I painted Snowman, I ended up getting a lot of, uh, I want to leave the mask on because it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty strong smelling in here. But when I did Snowman, I had a lot of uh, orange peel that I had to, that I had to hand sand and buff out. So I'm using this as kind of a, a practice setup to get my skills a little sharpened for the, uh, for the Peterbilt and the Duke but I want to make sure I give it adequate time because I say that's one of the reasons you can get orange peel is you don't allow the, the bottom or the first coat to flash and give off all its gases before you start laying in the second coat. So I'll give it a good solid 15 minutes and then hit it one more time. I'm happy with the way this is turning out. That's yeah, looking pretty darn good. Again, not perfect, but I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I think I'm going to go in and have a cold one. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you learned something. Thanks for watching to the end. Really appreciate your thoughts and comments, both positive and constructive, down below. If you could, hit the like button. Helps to get it up to more people with the old YouTube analytics. And yeah, thanks again. Oh yeah, one more thing. Don't ever forget, if you got it, my trucker brought it. See you next week.